okay, I know the Mohawk is retro, but turns out it's millions of years old. Now sauropods seem to have gained a reputation for being somewhat peaceful, conservative animals, but I look at Bajardosaurus and I see a fan of the clash. Punk rock! But what is this dinosaur? Where and when did it live? And what is with that funky do? Well stick around for the whole video because we'll be finding all of that out and more. During the Beriasian and Valanginian stages of the early Cretaceous lived Bajardosaurus pronaspinax, who was rocking his Sitka in northern Patagonia, Argentina, 145 to 132.9 million years ago. As you may have guessed, Bajardosaurus was a sauropod, specifically a diplodocid, with an obvious relation to Amargosaurus, with the only difference being the direction of the blow dry. Now, Bajardosaurus was originally found back in 2010 when it was excavated from the Bajarda, Colorado area. The paleontologist who found them, Pablo Galina, initially found a few fragmentary teeth, but digging a little further revealed most of the skull and a few neck vertebrae, which showed the most striking feature of this dinosaur. Bajardosaurus, like most other members of its family, was actually fairly small for a sauropod being only around the height of an Asian elephant, though we do need more complete remains to accurately estimate the length of this dinosaur. The neck, which was also relatively short for a sauropod, sported bifurcated neural spines, which means that the neural spines had two prongs sticking out of it. Now it was these neural spines that made this dinosaur look like a bloody punk rocker, sticking out the back of its neck and curving forwards. Now any sane person would look at this and say, yeah, but why? And we will get into that, but before we do, let's take a look at Bajardosaurus's environment. The Bajarda Colorado Formation was deposited, like I said earlier, during the early Cretaceous. This area, from what we know of it, consisted mostly of wide open plains with meandering rivers and small sections of meadows with ferns, horsetails, conifers, and the odd flowering plant. The area also seemed quite low in humidity. South America was quite close geographically to where it is today, so factoring in the Mesozoic greenhouse effects, the temperatures were likely close to today's equatorial mean temperatures. But I'm afraid other than that, we don't actually know a huge amount about this formation. Even our faunal knowledge is incredibly scarce when compared to other Mesozoic formations. But we do know of some other dinosaurs that cohabited this area with Bajardosaurus, such as some sort of Megalosaurid, a Deinonychosaur, an Ankylosaur, and an Abelosaurid, as well as Lion Capel, and the dinosaur with one of the coolest names ever, Ninja Titan. Now with such little known about this environment, it can be really difficult to predict what the actual function of these neural spines actually were. It also doesn't help that we've only found a couple of vertebra from this dinosaur, so all we can do is speculate as to what they actually truly look like. Now having said that, structures like this on dinosaurs are normally only there for one of three reasons. Those being either defense, display, or thermoregulation. One interesting thing was found with a relative of Bajardosaurus called Dicryosaurus when Daniela Schwartz et al. discovered that in between the two neural spines was a very typical feature of a dinosaurian respiratory system, air sacs. Now in other relatives such as Amargosaurus and likely Bajardosaurus, these air sacs would have only taken up the bottom third of this space with the upper two thirds being coated in a keratin sheath, much like Triceratops' horns. The giveaway feature of this is longitudinal striations along the surface of the bone. Now what these keratinous sheaths would have looked like in life, such as how far they extended, is currently unknown, but some have speculated that the keratin sheaths could have extended up to 50% the length of the spines. 
With this in mind, speculations began on Bajardosaurus using these for defence, especially since simply curling its neck forward would create a wall of spikes to simply run into. However, in 2022, an osteohistological study was performed on Amargosaurus by Ignacio Cerda et al, in which they concluded that the way these bones grew didn't actually infer a keratinous sheath, but instead a soft tissue sail. Now, Amargosaurus has been mentioned quite a lot in this video so far, and that's because it's actually the closest relative to Bajardosaurus that we know so much about. So until more specimens of Bajardosaurus are found, we're gonna to have to assume that both of these dinosaurs shared similar features. If Bajardosaurus did have a Spinosaurus-like sail running along its neck, it cuts out the possibility of these spines being used for defense, which likely leaves display or thermoregulation. Now, given the highly vascularized nature of the bones, both seem pretty plausible with blood vessels being able to shed or gain heat or maybe even possibly changing the color of the sail. All we can hope for now is that this video ages very poorly and I look like a complete idiot making this because that means that we would have found more specimens and hopefully it can give us a lot more insight into this dinosaur. But until that day comes, I want you guys to do what you do best and start an interesting discussion down below. I'm always genuinely fascinated to see what you guys can bring to the table and sometimes I learn something new. Now, if you do like what you've seen in this channel so far, please consider subscribing as I've got a lot more to come. Until next time. Punk rock!